Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Perseverance podcast by Towards Faith, where experts share thoughtful wisdom and gentle guidance on how we can persevere with our faith one step at a time. I'm your host Shahbaz and today's topic is a special one. We've all had an aspiration at some point in our life to memorize and internalize the names of Allah, but we haven't really quite gotten there. I'm joined today by Dr. Jinan Yusuf, who has researched, studied, written about, and taught the topic of the names of Allah to Muslims across the world. She's widely recognized with her recent publication, uh, Reflecting on the Names of Allah, published by Al Buruj Press. She studied under the guidance of many prominent scholars, such as Sheikh Akram Nadwi. I'm really excited because I think at some point in our life, we've all wanted to connect to Allah on a more deeper level. And Dr. Janan Yusuf will be here to help us do that through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. Without further ado, let's welcome her to the show. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum wa barakatuh. How are you today? I'm good, alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good as well. So we connected um, after you did a webinar um, on the names of Allah with Al Buruj many years ago. And since then, you've authored a book reflecting on the names of Allah. Why is this topic so important for you personally? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Jazakumullah khair and firstly for having me um, on this podcast. Um, and I think, yeah, this question is a really important one. And it's also one that I don't know how to answer because I think um, it's almost like the answer is so obvious because it should be important to all of us. It's not just, you know, important to me personally, but also as this is what it's about because our purpose of being here on earth, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why God put us here on earth is to know him and to worship him. Right. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just reveal one name, two names, three names, five names. Right. He reveals 99, over 99 names in order that we can know him and connect to him um, in every situation throughout life and submit our hearts to him. So when we talk about Islam and, the, and our own submission and the submission of the heart, you can only truly submit if you know who you are submitting to. And so it's been important to me because this is how you taste the sweetness of worship. Um, I would say that when I was younger, I had the intellectual um, acceptance of Islam as a faith and that the fact and the fact that there is a creator. Um, but that didn't help me to connect. And so my worship was very much, on and off, very much surface level, because even though I accepted it at an intellectual le level, there is nothing that connected my heart. And once I started to know Allah, once I started, once my teachers introduced me to Allah and who Allah is, that completely changed the way I connected to Allah, the way I connected to faith, the way I changed just through knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just uh, submitted myself, I think, uh, to him and just different situations just through knowing who he is mm. and can you share a personal experience or story maybe it was just a moment uh, in your childhood or as you were growing up uh, and that was the inflection point where you then started your journey of wanting to having a desire to understand his names even more yeah, I mean, maybe I don't have one story, but I think one thing that definitely changed things for me and that opened the door to knowing Allah is I had an Islamic studies teacher and she was wonderful and had such um, such a strong impact on me. Uh, and she said something which was talk to Allah. And it might not seem like such a big deal, but I think when you're taught Islam as rituals um, and so you almost you can only access God, you can only access Allah through prayer, through dua, through dhikr. Um, these are all important, of course, they're crucial. Uh, but it also makes your access to Allah restricted, right, to those very things. Mm. Um, and so when she just said, talk to Allah, I was, I don't know, 12 and a half, maybe 13. Mm -hmm. And she said, and I was thinking, what do, you, what do you mean talk to him? Like, how? Mm -hmm. And she said, just talk to him like you talk to anybody. And so I started with that, like even just telling Allah about my day. And you, you're almost, you are 
internalizing and living his names through that because you know that he's a Sami'a, that he hears you. Um, you know that he is a Rahman, that he has so much mercy for you because he cares. Um, you know that he is um, Al Basir because he sees you. And so you end up, without even knowing the specific names, you end up actually just internalizing because you, through talking to him, you know who Allah is. And I would say that was my own, I think, turning point. Um, you know, after that, I kind of studied a little bit the names, the names of Allah. Um, and I used to listen to like a lot of lectures, you know, back in the day I used to buy CDs and things like that. And so I would listen to those lectures. Um, and I think that helped me to connect. But I think the other perhaps turning point um, was when I went abroad and people and, you know, we do halaqas just between students. It's nothing, nothing major, nothing, you know, too intense. But I would get questions sometimes. And those questions were very much from my perspective based on a misconception of who Allah is. Like, I didn't understand why this question would come up, because if you understood who Allah is, this you wouldn't even think of this question. Mm. Um, and I think that became kind of the second turning point of, wait a second, why do you think that of God? Why do you think that of Allah? And I think that's probably what started the more intense and serious study. So it was more than being just about something for me but actually something for other people because it was it was concerning to me um and so and so i would say that's what started you know kind of the that was the next um i would say turning point um and so uh, so that's when you know kind of the serious study came and i started writing back in the day it was sohaibweb.com and then virtualmoss.com so i did like a weekly um it started out monthly actually monthly articles on the names of allah uh, and we had such a wonderful uh, team we called them the web authors because it was you know sohaibweb.com and so you know at the time many of them were students of knowledge and now they're all you know and they were scholars as well at the time and now you know uh, scholars as well and so you know it was good to be able to rely on them if there were any mistakes or, or anything like that and so so I would say those two turning points, one in my personal life and then one just in my interactions with uh, with other people. And so, um, so yes, yeah, so I think it's absolutely crucial, you know, to, to, to know his names. Yeah, I find that interesting, like talking to Allah and telling him about your day. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it reminds me of, uh, I think, in Surah Yusuf, when uh, Yaqub -Islam said that uh, I only uh, complain of my grief and sorrow to Allah. And uh, we all go through, especially in today's day and age, uh, we have a variety of different uh, issues that are arising, such as our, our mental health and emotional well-being. How can the names of Allah apply to the modern day challenges that we are facing, such as our, our mental health? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, we all go through a lot. Uh, and I think, you know, throughout the ages, people go through different uh, challenges, you know, you know, mental health issues, emotional issues. And I think, you know, knowing Allah really helps with a lot of that. Obviously, there's different types of mental health challenges and emotional issues that we go through. But just broadly and overall, you know, if we talk about, let's just say, a physical affliction, we, we can move away a little bit from, from mental and emotional. You know, um, if a person has cancer and, you know, they would, they can go and get chemotherapy you know, in order to, to treat their cancer. However, connecting to Allah during that it helps you to see the treatment and the illness uh, for, in a sense, for what they are and make sense of them. And so I, I see it in a similar way in terms of dealing with our mental and emotional challenges is that sometimes we do have to, you know, take certain means that Allah himself has provided and has created in this world. But those means won't help us to make sense of things mm -hmm. unless we know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So, you know, you mentioned Yaqub alayhi salam. And I mean, recently I've been connecting to, you know, Yaqub alayhi salam himself, you know, through Surah Yusuf. And, you know, if you see Yaqub, you know, he is constantly faced with loss despite his effort. Mm -hmm. So at the start... When Yusuf السلام, tells him that he has his, the dream, Yaqub responds to him and he says, you know, لا تقصص رؤياك. don't, you know, don't tell this this dream to your to your siblings. Um, because then, you know, they're going to plot something against you. And even without Yusuf السلام, telling them the dream, they still plot against him. Later on, he tells his sons, you know, to go through separate doors and not through one when they're going to, you know, separate gates uh, when they're when they're going to Egypt. And they listen to him. 
but still his other son, Benjamin, gets taken away. And so you look at the story of Yaqub. This is a man of deep faith. He's a prophet of God. He's taking all of the means. And yet he keeps, you know, quote unquote, failing. Right. But he's connected to God throughout. So from the start, he tells Yusuf alayhi salam that Allah is al-alim al-hakim. And then in the middle of the journey, again, when he loses Benjamin, again, that Allah is al-alim al-hakim, right? So the, mo- the you know, the all-knowing, the most wise. And so that, in a sense, helps him to make sense of and also have hope that even though he's doing everything that he can and he's maintaining faith and he's maintaining hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that he knows that Allah is all-knowing, the fact that he knows that Allah is the most wise, that helps him to get through this extreme, you know, emotional challenge. And it doesn't mean that he can't feel sadness or he can't feel grief, right? He, we, you already said, you know, Allah, that I only complain of my sorrow and my grief to Allah. And so, you know, those two things can can uh, can coexist, mm. right? Like having trust in Allah and still feeling sad, mm. right? But knowing Allah helps you to make sense of whatever situation you're going through. It helps you to have hope. It helps you to persevere. It helps you to have patience, right? So throughout, as I said, you know, Yaqub is just connecting to Allah. Allah knows and he's the most wise. This is happening for a reason. This is happening for a reason. And in the end, Yusuf alayhi salam, you know, that uh, that Allah is my wali, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like the, the ally or, or the patron, that Allah is latif, that Allah has been subtle, because that means that all those small things that were happening, happening in his life that might not have made sense, now he can see them and say, ah, Allah is a latif. And so when we talk about, you know, <coughs> mental health challenges, you know, when you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can also make sense of the challenges that you go through. And when you connect with the Quran and through the prophets in the Quran, again, for me, you know, I've been really connecting to Yaqub alayhi salam just to see how sometimes these strong emotions can, can coexist with hope, can coexist with, with knowing that there's going to be relief from Allah, uh, with still persevering, you know. So, you know, at the end, you might think, Okay, Yaqub, he was doing everything that he could, right, alayhi salam. And it always failed, like it just, it failed in a sense, right? But still, at the end, he says, you know, that go and tahassasu min Yusuf, go, go and look for Yusuf. And you're thinking, like, if it was me, like, I already did what I could. I can just be like, you know what, I did what I could. I'm just going to do nothing and sit back. But he persevered. And so all of that comes from knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and knowing who is in control, not looking at everything around you, not looking at the means that you're taking as dependent on you, but actually dependent on Allah making the outcome happen. And so, so yeah, so I think, you know, knowing Allah's names helps us to put our mental health challenges in context (coughs) while at the same time, you know, enabling us to take whatever means that we have in order to uh, to alleviate, you know, whatever struggles that we're going through. So you mentioned Yaqub alayhi salam and his uh, journey of uh, feeling like he's failing. So he could have went through certain emotions such as um, his self-worth could have been in question or his self-esteem. How can the names of Allah help us with these types of challenges and emotions that, that we that, that we sort of feel in today's day and age? Uh, that's an interesting question. I mean, to go back to Yaqub alayhi salam, I'm not sure I would say that he has, uh, that he might have had an issue with, with you know, self, self-esteem. But I understand, obviously, your question that, like, that's a lot of what we struggle with in these days, self-worth and self-esteem. And I think, you know, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it helps in, in many regards. But one of them is that it shifts from the creation to the creator, right? So you're shifting your focus because we have low self-worth or low self-esteem many times because either we've been judged as lesser than perhaps by other people or we judge ourselves as lesser than because we look uh, at certain standards of society or what's what is successful um, or what is you know a desirable or whatever it is and so we see ourselves as I don't have that and therefore I'm less than when you shift it to God, when you shift it to the names of Allah, you're shifting to something outside of you. You're shifting to the standards that God, that Allah himself has set and not to whatever society or even yourself. And I think uh, that's one important aspect of it. Um, and you also see yourself, you know, as really as special to Allah because, you know, subhanAllah, we all have different human needs, um, which Allah himself has created in us. And so if you think about, you know, 
a person's you know need uh, you know to be loved and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al wadud he's the loving he's the affectionate and you think Allah named himself that like Allah is telling you this and so the fact that you feel that you are I don't know unloved by people or by yourself but then you remember what Allah loves you and Allah chose and that Allah is al khaliq so Allah chose to create you so you're not you're not a waste of space you know you're not just created because you know just for no reason abatha right purposeless no this is from Allah from al khaliq you know and so I think that's one thing but I also want to emphasize on the on the other side of it just like when you have you know a, a physical ailment you know you will seek out the medicine in order to uh, to help to heal that physical ailment i think sometimes when these issues are very deep and they're quite ingrained we should also seek whatever treatments that there are for that because sometimes unfortunately if it's such a deep feeling of lack of self-worth we end up projecting that onto Allah right and so you can't forgive yourself you think Allah can't forgive you right and it doesn't matter how many times someone tells you well Allah's named himself a tawab that means that constantly you he's there he wants to like wallahu yuridu an yatub alaykum that Allah wants to accept you turning back to him. This is not, this is not Janan saying this, right? Mm-hmm. This, is, this is Allah like saying this in the Quran, that if someone were to ask you, what does God want? What does Allah want? It says that in the Quran, he's saying himself that this is Allah who you read, God wants, right? For, you, for him to accept you to turn, turn back to him. But sometimes, like I mentioned, if those feelings are super, are really ingrained in someone, it creates almost like this barrier. And so knowing Allah's names, I think, can definitely help to chip away at that barrier for sure. But, you know, um, it's also important to take the tools that Allah himself has made available in order to to help with that. Hmm. Hmm. Someone is looking to start their journey or restart their journey in, in learning the names of Allah. Where, <clears throat> how should they start? Um, is it, looking at it as a list and memorizing it is it choosing a name at random what should that journey look like Mm -hmm. um i'm not a proponent of the list methodology uh, definitely uh because i think it it ends up you know we just look at it as like you said it's a list and you just memorize it it's something that should be savored it's like saying you know how do you approach the quran do you just read it and just say that's it I've done what I'm supposed to do or do you really savor it and it becomes this lifelong uh, journey right I mean you know people ask me they say you know the names of Allah I'm like no I don't you know um, you know even even if I've written a book this is it, it's a lifelong journey I mean I always tell people that you know when I teach classes there's more insights that when um, that you know I feel like I could write so much more now uh, so it's never something that ends so if you you know how do you start the journey, you know, to learning um, the names of Allah? Uh, it's going to look different for different people, but, you know, you can start with, I mean, shameless plug, the, ju- the journal, you know, but that can help, right? Because, you know, it's it's done in a way to kind of to get you to think about the names of Allah. You know, you can purchase, you know, a book, uh, you can take a course. There are many courses. There's, there's a lot of um, accessibility that kind of, uh, that takes you beyond uh, just learning the list just saying these are the names and you memorize them that's it great you've got your ticket to jannah and Mm. that's all you need to do (laughs) you know um but no rather you know there's 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 plenty there's so many different teachers who are doing courses on the names of allah there's a lot of different resources out there um in english uh where people can start that journey so there's definitely different ways but i'm much more proponent of you know, really connecting to, to to each name to understand who Allah is and how his names manifest um, in your life rather than just looking at it as a list. Mm. You know, I, I believe I believe it was Ibn al-Qayyim who said, you know, if people think that, you know, man hafidaha, so whoever learns, you know, the names, you know, is going to enter paradise and they just think that that means rote memorization, this doesn't make sense because... A good person and a bad person, you know, can memorize the names of Allah, you know, um, a person who believes in the names and who doesn't believe in them can can memorize them. So it's not really about memorization. It's actually really understanding, internalizing and living your life in such a way that, you know, uh, that you almost see the manifestations of Allah's names in your life. Mm. Yeah. What are some of the misconceptions that people have about the names 
of Allah? I think a big one um, is seeing them as surface deep. So kind of what we're talking about, which is let me just listen to a nasheed and just memorize the names of Allah. I think the other thing is, you know, I, I get this question a lot, which is like, how can I use the names of Allah? And I can't tell you how much this this question or the phrasing of this question hurts my heart <laughs> um, because, you know, this is not, it's not like, it's not, a to- it's not a tool, right? This is who Allah is. I mean, I kind of liken it if I were to tell you, you know, this person is kind, and then you said, okay, how do I use their kindness? I mean, mm-hmm. you would never say that, you know? But, and so so with Allah, Allah is telling us who he is. And so we don't see it. You know, I think we've become very mechanical about things, right? Everything mm-hmm. is a to-do list. So let me memorize. Memorize means that I just know it in my mind. Let me pray. It's not about the khushur. Let me just do the movements and the actions. And so I think this is these are some of the misconceptions that it's really, it's just very, everything is very sur- surface deep and it's not about understanding and it's not about connecting. Uh, people ask me, you know, what name should I quote unquote use in this situation? And I'm just thinking, what do you want from Allah in this situation? Mm-hmm. Right? Who is Allah to you in this situation? Right? Because you know, when Ayyub alayhi salam, you know, when he's calling out to Allah, he says, Anni masani wa anta arhamur rahimin, that you know, harm has afflicted me and you are the most merciful of those who show mercy. He's feeling the mercy of Allah at that point. And so he calls out to Allah mm-hmm. with, you know, Ya Arham Rahim. He doesn't just say, I mean, yes, you can call on Allah, you know, a Shafi, you know, the one who heals if if you know you're feeling ill. But it's not as as formulaic mm-hmm. as as that. You know, not everything is a formula one plus one equals two. Allah is telling you who he is. And so sometimes in some times of of my life i'm you know i'm asking for allah to show me the wisdom and so i'm calling upon his name you know al-hakim the most wise uh, maybe if i'm ill you know i'm really like ayub alayhi salam that i'm just I'm, I'm i want you know ya allah like you're merciful you know show me your mercy uh, or let me feel you know um your mercy um so it's not i think it's you know and this misconception as well that it's very formulaic you know it's the if you do this this is what's going to happen if you do that like this this is not magic right mm-hmm. i mean i, I think i spoke with sheikh akram nadbi about, about this and you know he said you know muslims you know magic for us is haram but people like to use these things as though they're magic <laughs> right that you're going to sprinkle this and then that's it what you you know it's like a genie right i'm going to sprinkle this and what i want is going to happen and that's not what it is allah is telling us who he is and Allah is far above any analogy, but with a human being, you know, you want to get to know them, you want to have a deeper relationship with them. It's not, I mean, if you were just getting to know them because of what you can get out of them, just at a human level, you'd be like, that's that's pretty bad. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty bad thing to do, you know, that I just want to get to know you to just know what I can get out of you. Mm-hmm. But rather, if I want to get to know someone because I want a deeper connection, uh, because I want to understand them, because I want them to be with me in my life, it's a very different way of approaching the names and the attributes of Allah. And so again, Allah is far above any analogy, but I don't, it's not like this transactional thing where like, let me understand this so that X, Y, Z. It's like, I actually just want to know who Allah is. I want my heart to submit to Allah. I want to be able to see in everything that happens in my life, how I can submit to Allah in everything that happens, how Allah is manifesting his subtleties, you know, in everything that's happening in my life, even now with what's happening, you know, what we see, what we see happening in Gaza, for example, and people are despairing, Right. But then you take a step back and you say, no, wait, but Allah is the Muhammad, Allah is the one who's in control. No, no, no. I, so I, I see beyond. I Those veils that are in front of us that are that are illusions of power, mm. they're not actually power, right? Allah is the Muhammad, he's the one who's in control, right? So you connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you know. And so you're not as shaken by the things that happen in the world mm. because you know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, mm. right? So to go back to the original question about, you know, about the misconceptions, our misconception is that we see it as very form- formulaic, as very surface level, um, a name and its definition, and not this is Allah telling you who he is. Mm. And I think th- we have to change the way we perceive of his names. Mm. So we, we need to go beyond memorization. We need to internalize. And I guess what I'm learning in this discussion with you is that through understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his names, we... I guess we we build up an appreciation for him and also uh, you know the wonders that he's doing for us I- in our life and we're able to go beyond this kind of surface level understanding of what's going around what's going on around us and inside of us uh, and we're able to connect 
with that with us and to him on a, on a much more, more more deeper level i remember um i must have been about five years old but i was at one of these end of the year islamic class competitions where people were going up and reciting the the 99 names of allah and whoever recited all of them got a prize um it, it should we be uh you know almost instilling this uh different way of teaching the names of Allah to to even our kids at a younger age? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I want to say I'm not perhaps, you know, against uh, memorizing at all. Mm. Uh, it's like saying, you know, memorizing the Quran without understanding. Of course, the most important thing is understanding, but mm. sometimes memorization becomes a means to understanding, mm. right? Because, you know, so you know, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ سُورَةُ الْإِخْلَاصِ And then... You know, you might not know the meanings, but then later on you delve into the meanings, right? I personally prefer um, kind of understanding as a way of memorizing because I think this is just personal. I'm not. I'm not saying that this is how everybody should should do things, but I think you end up having it. it enriches, I think, the process of knowing Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and so I think that when you do that, you know, it's it takes much longer. Right. I mean, mm. if you want to memorize a list of Allah's names, I mean, you can probably do that in a very short period of time. Um, and so it's much longer. But I think it's a, it's a much richer uh, process, I would say. But I mean, the other way around can work as well. You know, you can memorize, you know, 99 names and then, you know, that you know them, you kind of you have them in your in your arsenal. You understand that Allah has these names and maybe a bit of a definition. And then you proceed and kind of try to connect to these names um, on a deeper level, Allah through these names on a, mm. at a deeper level. So I don't think that there is necessarily a right or wrong way to do them, to do this or to understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Uh, I think it really depends on the stage at which a person is at. Like maybe when they're younger, it's easier to memorize. So you could do memorization first and then go through, you know, what the names mean. Maybe as a person, you know, gets older, you focus more on, on the on the meanings but for myself i've definitely found that i never memorized you know the nasheed on the names of allah i really just took it kind of learning from classes and taking kind of those names um and uh, and just really trying to internalize them at different stages of my life so i would say that's my own journey but mm. i think there are different ways of of doing it mm. for sure what this might be a bit of a, a difficult question but what should it look like or feel like to have memorized and internalized the names of Allah for example like uh, uh, to pray as if you're seeing him is almost an end state of prayer with and I think when we pray we we know ourselves whether we've had a good prayer or a, a really bad prayer <laughs> um, but when it comes to the names of Allah is there some type of an end state or a feeling or uh, something that would help us to understand that right okay i i get these names and mm -hmm. they're a part of my life mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think i mean it's one of these things that's definitely much more subtle right because mm -hmm. you know when you pray you're like okay i've had a good prayer i felt connected i felt you know my heart was humbled mm -hmm. and then sometimes you're just like oh my goodness i was totally distracted <laughs> i don't you know this is like i don't even know what i said i don't know what surah <laughs> i read right so it's it's much more um perhaps objective right with the names of Allah, I mean, I think you start to notice it in yourself just in the way that you approach the world, just in the just in how much you turn to Allah through the daily and the mundane, mm. right? That you actually, you understand, you kind of, you see things. Maybe you look outside and you, you know, you see the moon and you're just like, subhanAllah, and you don't just see... Allah being Al-Khaliq, but then you see also, you know, even just Allah being Al-Jameel, the most beautiful. You're thinking, it doesn't have to look this nice, you know, mm. like the moon is so beautiful. And so you just start to find that, like, you think of Allah in everything that you're doing, right? And I think, and I feel that's hard and it, it fluctuates, obviously, even a person who's, you know, you know, who studies and learns and is constantly thinking about the names of Allah, it fluctuates just like, you know, with your prayer, the khushur is going to fluctuate. But I think you probably find yourself, A, the way that you deal with both the tests and the blessings in your life, that your immediate reaction, your immediate, yeah, the reaction is just that you go back to Allah. You go back to Allah. I think that's probably like a good litmus test. But then also, you know, tests and blessings, like they are, I'm not going to say that they're exceptional. I mean, blessings, alhamdulillah, we're, we're drowning really in blessings. But I mean, you know, the ones that you kind of, that are overt or that, you know, come suddenly. But it's really, once you start to see the names of Allah 
see the manifestations of the names of Allah and really in the mundane. And, you know, when you're driving your car, right? Mm-hmm. And then you just you just feel that, subhanAllah, like, you know, just the subtlety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you might be sitting and you just feel the wind and you might not think of it, you might not have thought of it before. But now you actually think you're just like, wow, look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this. Or when you look at a person's face and you think, wow, Allah is al-musawwar, like, we're, we all look so different, like, this is amazing, right? But you just, you start to connect everything to Allah, you know? And I so I, I can't say that there's an end state because, you know, I mean, is there an end state when you want to get close to Allah? I don't think that any bus, any person can say that they're there. It's always it's like it's like the Quran, right? Like I I doubt that anybody can say that they know the Quran, right? Even a person who's a scholar of tafsir, and you know maybe they've written ten volumes just on Surah Al Fatiha. Mm. If you ask them, they'd just say. No, there's so much more, yeah. right? There's so much more. Like this is just, this is, I'm just scratching the surface. And so I think with the names of Allah, it's the same. It's like, no, there's, there's always, there's so much more, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, so I, I, I wouldn't say that there's an end state until, until inshallah, we see Allah in Jannah. That's, that's, that's the, the goal, the end state, inshallah. Um, you, you teach th- this topic online through Swiss and, mm-hmm. and other institutes as well. Uh, can you maybe share a, a story of a student or an individual that you know who has had uh, a transformation in their life through starting to understand and connect to the names of Allah? Yeah, I mean, I can think of two. I think one is actually, uh, yeah, one of the students um, at Swiss uh, who I also know personally. And this uh, this person uh, has a chronic condition and they go through a lot of intense pain. And so it's an autoimmune condition um, and, you know, they've tried to manage it um, in different ways, but, you know, the the pain gets incredibly intense. And I received a message once saying, you know, and I actually, I put that on my Instagram and I asked I asked this person if I could put it and I, and I posted it there, but it was basically, you know, I haven't gone through this type of pain in such a long time that like I cried and I never cry, even though like, chronically I'm always in pain but this time it was just it was so overwhelming that like I broke down crying and then I was thinking I I want to just hold on to Allah and so and I started thinking what were the names that we that we learned and I and I thought of As-Samad you know um you know and As-Samad is like the eternal refuge like the the unshakable that you can kind of you you turn to for all of your needs and this person was saying, you know, and I just calling on a samad and they were like, I swear that I felt all of the pain leave my body. Wow. And I was oh. like, Allahu Akbar. I was like, I was like, oh, my God. Like, you know, <laughs> they're like, this never happens. They're just like, they're like, this never happens. This, at least I'm always in pain. And and just calling on Allah, samad, I felt everything come out of my body. Um, and I was just like, Allah, like, I just, I have nothing to say except Allah, you know? Um, and so, and so that's definitely one thing that like, that has struck me, you know, for sure. I think another one, uh, this was when, when I was in the UK and we used to do, um, you know, in-person halaqas when we were talking about Allah's name, Ar-Rab. And I remember the, the sisters, um, they were, you know, they were talking and we, and I talked about how, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu if you look at it from his perspective, being a child, I mean, he received revelation when he was 40 years old. So prior to that, he didn't know that he was a prophet. So he went through things as a human being. Mm-hmm. And then you think the first attribute that is revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu is the rububi of Allah, right? That he is, he is al rabb he's the Lord, you know, sabbih uh, um, al a'la, right? And so I was thinking, thinking, think of the coin dropping, you know, that like you've been taken care of your whole life, all of the struggles that you went through, everything, but it was all for a purpose because you were having this tarbiya, right? This nurturing mm-hmm. from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I remember one person was saying, she was like, you know, I've gone through a lot of hardships in my life and I never thought of connecting to the Prophet Sallallahu in that way and then connecting to Allah in that way that like my struggles were for a purpose and actually Allah was taking care of me through those stru- struggles. I was actually being nurtured through those struggles and I still you know kind of remember I think that uh, that as well so those are two that 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 come to mind definitely well, the first story is um subhanallah is, uh, give me goosebumps last question you probably get this question a lot are there any specific names of Allah that resonate with you personally yes uh, d- different <laughs> ones at different times I think um, I think this is the thing with the names of Allah and as you go through you know whatever it is that you're going through um, in life 
I mean, you know, you connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and just in different ways uh, when things are good, when things are bad, when things when you're struggling, when things are boring, you know. Um, and I think probably at this time, I would say, you know, like, I guess two sets of names, I think with again, with what we're seeing in the world, particularly a lot of the injustice that we're seeing, I think two names really come to mind, which is, you know, um, Al-Mu'min al muhaymin you know, Al-Mu'min is like the grantor of security and Al-Muhaymin, as I mentioned before, is the one who's in total control. And I think, you know, Al-Mu'min, you know, we, you know, you asked about feeling insecure, right? And so, you know, as, as human beings, we have this internal insecurity, external insecurity, lack of safety. And Allah Al-Mu'min is the one who gives you security through faith, through your faith in him. Uh, he gives you ultimate security in the hereafter. Uh, he's the one who's believed and he affirms your good opinion of him, right? Allah says, Ana abdi bi, that I'm at my servant's opinion of me. And so in a sense, he affirms what you believe of him. So if you believe well, if you think well of Allah, Allah won't let you down. Allah will affirm that. And so I think with what we, we're, we're seeing in the world and particularly people who are standing, you know, uh, you know, people in Palestine who are standing, you know, in really in you know in, in sumud and steadfastness and you're thinking how how right this is Allah al-mu'min that Allah is securing your your heart through faith and we see this in the Quran with for example Asiya alayhi salam as she's being tortured by this person who seems to have so much more power but is actually insecure because why are you torturing a woman mm -hmm. you know um, if you really feel that you're actually that powerful but she was the one who's powerful right she was the one who could say Rabbi ibn li andaka baytan fil jannah I can she made this and she's smiling mm. my lord built for me near you a house in paradise a home in paradise and so uh, and so she was the one who was secured through her faith not Pharaoh similarly with the magicians right like they they you know they they see the signs they immediately believe Pharaoh threatens to crucify them and to cut off their hands and their and their feet and you think okay just lie, right? just lie, just say that you don't believe and just believe in your heart, but they, they, they stood firm. And Pharaoh did do that to them, right? So again, from the outside, you're thinking, oh my goodness, how? But they were the ones who were secured. So that's Allah al-Mu'min. They were secured through faith. That's Allah al-Mu'min. And al-Muhaymin is like I mentioned, that Allah is in control. These... All of these structures, these are all illusions, they're all veils. You think you're looking at something that is powerful, but it has no power whatsoever. Like Pharaoh is, you know, that there's this woman who's standing up to him, that there's these magicians who are under his power, but they can actually defy him mm -hmm. because they know who's in control. You're not in control. Wallahu khayrun wa abqa. Allah is far better and more enduring. You think you're going to endure? And so I think these two names in this, in this particular time, have been have really resonated and I just turned to Allah I think wow just the manifestations of Allah's you know how Allah gives amn the safety the security and how his hayman his control over everything um you know despite what others might might have us believe and I think another name is al-jabbar and so al-jabbar is you know it has two kind of two aspects to it one is that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you know he's a compeller right that he can compel you know anyone and anything and so on the one side it's like it has this majesty that you fear but then on the other side you know the a, a jibira you know if you have a broken bone and they put the splint in order to heal your bone that's called a jibira from the same root because mm -hmm. it's kind of it's compelled to heal and so Allah also heals the brokenness and I think this I've connected to a lot because I think we have felt broken because of a lot of things that are happening. Mm. Um, maybe, you know, either in your personal life, you know, or what's happening in the world. And so when I felt this and, you know, I kind of, you know, um, you know, just ask Allah, you know, you say like, Allahumma ajbar kasri. Like, yeah, Allah, just like mend my brokenness, just heal my brokenness. And sometimes the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that is like in the most subtle ways, right? Like you could, somebody could just say a kind word to you that you needed to hear at that moment and it just makes you feel so much better maybe your problem wasn't solved you know you still have the same problem mm. right but does that help to mend you right the prophet ﷺ, when he's you know when he's uh, you know kicked out of ta'if and you know is completely broken because of what happened right and then you know allah kind of sends an angel um and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i mean there's a story that's i mean the authenticity is disputed about you know this this young um, servant who comes to the Prophet ﷺ and gives him and gives him grape. I do want to mention that the authenticity is is disputed, but you know even if we take like that subtle kind of action and like how it it would have made the Prophet ﷺ feel that like okay that there is this one person who believed in him, it didn't change the situation. 
you know, mm. everything everything stayed the same. He still did not have refuge in Ta'if, but then this one boy. But if you really want to talk about the Jabr, actually, in this story, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi it's actually after that, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi gets, you know, um, that Allah takes him on the journey of Al-Isra al-Mi'raj. And what an amazing healing of what's broken, right? That maybe mm. you feel abandoned by people. And, you know, at Abu Talib, you know, had passed away. Khadija radiallahu anha had passed away. So, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu was broken, right? And then mm. not being given refuge. Then Allah gives him this magnificent honor. Mm. And again, it didn't change the situation. So sometimes the jabr of Allah is not that your circumstances change. You might be in the same difficulty. But Allah somehow, through the most subtle means, because he's latif as well, that he heals your brokenness. Um, and so, so I think that's also a name that I've that I've been connecting to a lot in these days. That's a deep connection there. <laughs> MashaAllah. Thank you so much uh, for sharing all of your wisdom uh, and insights with us. If someone is looking to learn more um, about yourself and also your writings and teachings, how can they connect with you? Um, so the the classes uh, have been recorded on Swiss. We were going to restart them, inshallah, maybe next semester, not not right now. So teaching them live again. Uh, I have an Instagram uh, at j.yusuf underscore. Uh, mm-hmm. So I kind of, I post random thoughts on there. Um, and I have a website, reflectingon.life. And so I blog random thoughts here and there. Uh, and I also write for um, Yaqeen Institute. So there are some articles there on the names of Allah and some um, videos as well. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, thank thank you. you for being on the Towards Faith podcast. Um, I've personally learned a lot from uh, from the show. And I still remember a couple of years ago when I, I watched that webinar on when I was aimlessly scrolling on Facebook. I think you were the first uh, voice that I listened to that did change my perception and then connection to the names of Allah. So thank you so much uh, for that as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me on the show. Jazakumullah khairan. And also for the opportunity to, to collaborate. It's such an honor. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Jazakumullah khair.